I wouldn't want to do this with anybody else. I wouldn't want to go down this journey and, and, and the experiences and the growth and the learning and stuff with anybody but John. The way he, com he composes himself and how he interacts with everyone in the industry and the history and foundation he's built for himself here is just truly inspirational. John Kosker, owner of Mystic Powerboats here in DeLand. I grew up around powerboats and spent a lot of time boating. Um, my father was a, a very avid boater, but a terrible boat driver. At a very young age, I started driving boats when he would get frustrated and just didn't feel like doing it, so. We started vacationing up on Cape Cod Bay and spent pretty much every day on the water on Cape Cod Bay. I would. I would go blue fishing and um, catch blue fish to sell for 10 cents a pound to the tuna fishermen, which would basically pay for my fuel when I was happy. Coming from being on the water, um, I wanted to pursue designing and building boats. I went to Florida Tech down here in, in Melbourne, Florida. There were other schools I looked at, University of Michigan, University of Rhode Island, fantastic schools for naval architecture, but the thing that caught my curiosity with Florida Tech was that they had a high-speed small craft discipline there in the Naval Architecture program and they had a really good professor who studied under some of the best hydrodynamicists in the world um, you know, that, that generation. The thing I learned really early on was I couldn't really draw well by hand which made me very nervous, but luckily at that point, AutoCAD was becoming more prevalent, computer-aided design was becoming more prevalent, so really early on, I adopted 3D CAD design, which in the marine industry wasn't really used that much at that point. Pretty much design from scratch, the ground up, uh, everything in SolidWorks, from the surfacing to engine installations to fixtures and, and faucets and things like that in the cabin. When I was in school, I, I interned with Roller Propellers. I started working with John Connor, who um, was with the first Transatlantic project and with the refit with the Gentry Eagle. I was doing so much work with John that finally he contacted me and says, look, we need an engineer for this project to take the Transatlantic record back to the U.S. A $7 million brute of a thing, developing 11,000 horsepower and capable of speeds of more than 100 kilometers an hour on the open sea. Tom's indulgence is racing powerboats across the Atlantic Ocean, from New York to first landfall off I England. think one of the neatest things I've ever done in my career was be able to sit at a computer with Tom Gentry while he went, what if we change this, what if we move that, and we spent the whole day just moving lines around on his new 160 foot boat, and I was basically pinching myself the whole time that this can't really be happening right now. Are you gonna try and break your own transatlantic record? Oh, uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, we've been fooling around with some designs, but uh, you know, I don't think we'll we want to break our own record, but uh, uh, you know, if it looks like it's in danger, we might do something, I'm not sure. <laughs> was lined up with an interview with Twin Disc, who owned Arneson at that point. I flew up to um, Chicago, I drove up to Racine. I think I interviewed with three or four different people. By the second person, I could tell this wasn't for me. Um, fantastic company, I could have had a great career there. I wasn't a corporate guy. It wasn't gonna happen, I wasn't gonna be in that environment, it wasn't for me, so. I returned their Cadillac rental car. I rented the cheapest uh, junk that I could get for a rental car, and I drove uh, around the other side of the lake over to Skater. My old boss at Rolla lined it up with Pete 
for me to be able to do a tour, and Pete was gracious enough. He gave me the full tour of the whole place. I kind of walked away from that, and I went and visited um, a couple other builders up in that area there and said, you know what, this, this looks like I could do this. Uh, uh, we incorporated Mystic a matter of weeks later. Mystic Power Boats is a high-tech, high-end boat designer manufacturer founded in 1996 by John Kosker. In the end of, actually in the end of 2006 and into 2007, we were building 350-foot cats. We had under construction of a contract at that point. Um, we were building a 70-footer for Stu Leonard, and we were building a 60-foot V-Hull also. By the end of 2008, we had nothing. Um, we basically went from 20-something, 30 employees down to about six. We had pretty much closed down at that point. The week before, we had no work at that point. Uh, I went to the boat show, uh, told Scott Lowe, my lamination foreman, that I'm gonna go sell a boat. Uh, we had to stop by and say hi to John Kosker at Mystic So I was hanging around Aquamania, talking to different people, and uh, a little guy named Don Alkin walked up to me. Asked a number of questions about the boat and everything, and then uh, went away. I was talking to someone else, and I could see Don was kind of hanging in the wings there and waiting and waiting and waiting. And uh, finally, I finished up with the gentleman I was talking to, and Don walked up and handed me $700 cash and said, Let's start building the boat. I wanted to grow a company and be a boat manufacturing company and not just a boat builder, which there is a difference. There's people who just build boats and there's people who build a manufacturing company. There's only so many 50-foot race boats you can build in the world. We, we knew that pretty early on. We built a few pleasure boats, but it still really wasn't enough to sustain where I wanted to be. The 50 wasn't a long-term sustainable product. You know, in 2014, I was at the Miami Boat Show and um, Scott Shogren wanted to meet with me. Scott had been a dealer for a number of builders and things like that and wanted something new. In the last five years, I've been listening to consumers and what they like, don't like, what they, what they want to have in a center council. So we did a lot of things. Uh, he came to me and he pitched the idea of a center council. We went from an idea in our heads to a running boat in about eight months, which I would not want to do again. We take a lot longer with our development now. Amazingly, we sold a boat at the show um, off of what we had there, which wasn't the greatest product in the world at that point. Um, we needed to learn a lot about fit and finish and things like that, which was our hardest, um, our hardest adaptation from race boats. You know, as long as they went fast and won, a lot of else was forgiven on it. Um, with the center console business, that's not true at all. So that was our biggest challenge. If you told me 10 years ago that I would only be building outboard boats, I would have told you you were crazy. It's the best move I've ever made in my life personally, um, financially, business-wise. Um, we'll never go back. Most boat manufacturers don't build their own engines. We have a very, very close relationship with Mercury and Mercury Racing. So Mercury's path dictates our path a little bit. And I think with the new V12 being introduced, was a very strong statement of where Mercury is going and where Mystic will follow with them. When I was working with Dave Callen, um, you know, we were developing them as Tenkara and we, we knew we had a boat that was running pretty well and Dave said he wanted to bring it to the Lotto shootout and I had no idea what that was. <laughs> brutally hot in the summer here and I remember thinking that um, at least the boats are going north it'll be cooler. Uh, we landed in St. Louis it was 109 degrees up there. We came over this vista and this gorgeous lake opened up in front of us so uh, that was 2001 or 2002 or so and I've been back every year since then weather is a, 
a spectator, as a competitor, as a salesman. Um, we've come out of the lotto years and spend a fraction of what we do at the big boat shows, and we'll sell three, four, maybe five boats out of that. So it's, it's more for me from just the lotto competition to a huge sales opportunity in a, in a boat show for Mystic at, at that event there. It goes by roughly 25 seconds or so. You'll come into the start box on a cold day like this, pretty dry and nonchalant. You come out drenched with sweat. You get a feeling when the boat's right at 200. Um, it's, it's a rumble that it's really hard to describe. I felt it in other cats. I even feel it in our outboard cat at times when it's just set up and right. Um, you've got to train yourself sometimes less is more. When the boat's doing what it should do, just leave it alone. Sometimes I'll be sitting there and I have to tell myself, just don't do anything. It's fine. Just leave it alone. Don't get greedy. Robin and I got married and we started the company in the same year and both are still going strong, so. I remember him sitting down, I'm planning the wedding, and he just sat down and started designing a boat. Within a day and a half, designed a whole boat and it looked pretty good to me. You know, she has always been my backstop, whether it's a new silhouette for a new product that's going out soon or a floor layout on something else I'm doing or a cabin layout. You know, I, I always run it past her to get input and things like that. The early times with Mystic, it was, he just worked so much. Oh, I worked a lot in building the business. Um, you know, I wasn't always there for all the dance recitals and everything, so. When things got rough with Mystic, and John, I could see it in him, you know, I don't know what I'm gonna do, and I'm like, well, I'll come and I'll just figure it out. <laughs> Robin was a, a environmental engineer for NASA's um, Kennedy Space Center. You know, it wasn't her training, it wasn't what she liked to do, um, but she came in and did it. And, and she got us through a really hard time with that before we could afford to, you know, bring a new bookkeeper on. So, Rachel and Kendall, they, they've been, Kendall's been working part-time while she's still in school, and then uh, Rachel worked part-time and then came on full-time with us um, after she graduated last May. Here at Mystic, I mostly, as I like to tell people, I do anything that my dad doesn't feel like doing. I've been able to take over a lot of the type of things that he, that he's had to do but doesn't particularly like to do at Mystic. Most of these guys, they just want to come in and build boats. They don't really think about how we could it, improve that process, so. Her being able to take that over and take some of that off my plate has really helped a lot. Kendall has helped a lot in, um, the aesthetic side of the business. She's been very involved in interior outfitting and things like that, and I would love to see her you know, get more involved with that. A Mystic is a very custom boat. They pick out every color, every texture, every pattern on the boat, which is, can be kind of cumbersome. Um, you know, If I don't have to look at another brown with a customer for the rest of my life, I wouldn't be that unhappy with that, so. We do a pretty good job of handling the day-to-day, -day, so he has time for the way bigger picture things that he has to do. You know, uh, a big tree needs to have a decent root system, otherwise it's, it's not going to stay standing. So, you know, as a company grows, we have to make sure we have enough growth on the bottom side to support the rest of it. He has definitely taught me a lot um, as far as business goes, production goes, manufacturing. So I wouldn't want to go down this journey and, and, and the experiences and the growth and the learning and stuff um, with anybody but John. The best thing about working with him is he listens to me like I'm him 20 years in the past. Like, there's never anything I could say where he just brushes it off. Every idea I have or a suggestion I have for Mystic is actually something he considers and listens to and even sometimes implements if it works correctly. I've always wanted to be in boat design and boat construction. 
never thought it would really grow this big, but I'm really glad it has.